Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. Hope your day's going really well. I'm in Topaz Studio 2 today, and um, you know, I've been really busy with all the Luminar 4 stuff, and I'll continue to do videos there. I've got a lot more I want to talk about, but I've had a number of folks ask me, hey, are you going to do any more Topaz Studio videos? Uh, and the answer is yes, I'm going to do one right now. Uh, but the truth is, I was just so tied up with so many things I wanted to talk about in Luminar 4 that I really hadn't spent any time in Topaz Studio. So, I have gotten back in, I've shaken off the cobwebs because a little bit in the beginning when I got back in, I was like, wait, what do these buttons do kind of thing? Um, you know, it get a little rusty because I haven't been using it, um, but I'm back and I'm going to do it. Uh, and this video is about taking a, uh, a street scene that I took in Paris and converting it from a photograph to an artistic sort of interpretation because that's part of what I like about Studio is it just gives you so many artistic um, options, I guess, is the word. So here's the photo. Um, this is just kind of near Notre Dame-ish. And uh, anyway, street scene at night. Just I love the lines. I like the light and all that, but I don't like the colors. And I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And so I turned it into that in Studio, which was actually very simple. And that's one of the other things that's great about Studio is it's just very powerful and simple to use. And it uh, gives you a lot of control over your photos. So let me hop into studio and we'll get started. Okay, here we go. The first thing I do is go in over here and get the crop tool and I want to make this a 16 by 9. I want to pull that a little bit more that way. Maybe straighten it a tad. I can never tell. I swear all my photos are crooked. Um, I really do need to see a chiropractor. I've said that before. Uh, but um, Anyway, I think that's about right. I wanted the um, that left line to really line up on that steeple and this right line kind of close to lining up on that uh, lamp post there. I think that looks fine. I'm gonna hit apply and there we go. Now I'm gonna hit fit so I have a little bit bigger photo and now I'm ready to edit. So the first thing I like to do is make sure the light's kind of balanced and admittedly, the light's kind of balanced here. So what I will typically do if I don't really need to work a whole lot on the light is go get precision contrast, which in my opinion is one just about of the uh, just about one of the best photo uh, photos, one of the best filters in a studio. It's really powerful, and I will admit to being very non-scientific about what I do with this filter, which is I generally come over here and drag all of these to about 20, 25, something like that, uh, and just see how it looks because. Um, you know, it's hard to tell until you kind of do it as to what kind of impact it's going to have on the photo, but um, it, it's super powerful. I, I just think it works so well. And if I zoom in a little bit, let me do that and then turn this filter off. Let me show you the before. There it is. A little less crispy, a little less defined. And now when I turn it on, you can see it does get a little bit crispier. I mean, I love uh, you know the decorations on these lampposts and stuff, but even in the distance here, I just think it looks way better. So I'm gonna hit fit and go back, and I'm happy with it now. Okay, next up, I wanna do a little bit of a temperature and tint adjustment because as much as I love Paris and street scenes, lights like that that give off this greenish glow, uh, just barf, I don't like them at all. So I'm gonna go into basic adjustment. The first thing I'm gonna do is give it a little kick and clarity and uh, you know something about like that. And then I'm gonna come over here to temperature and tint. So temperature, I'm gonna go pretty far to the left, like negative 60, you know, three, let's call it. And you can see it's become really um, kind of greenish blue there, those lights, and that's where tint comes in. So whenever you have a green tint in your photos or kind of a green cast, um, consider using tint as a, uh, as a way to overcome that. I'm gonna go pretty far to the right here, something about like that, and hey, magically it's gone. Um, and all I've done is basically told it, look, I want the temperature to be cooler and I want the tint to be more towards that magenta and away from the green. And so now I'm done with this. And if I show you the before and after, there's before, pretty green, kind of ugly. In fact, a photo that I would probably pass in my library and just say, ugh, but easy to fix, right? So if you pass those up because the color casts are terrible, consider changing the tint. It, it, it works magic. And there it is after. Much more balanced, much more frankly, how I remember it, and um, I think um, much better place to start editing. Okay, and now that I have that, I wanna go do some split toning. So they have a, a, a slider called dual tone, or a filter called dual tone, which is basically split toning. It allows you to take the highlights and pick a color and saturation level, and separately pick the shadows and do the same thing. So in highlights, I'm gonna go over here to uh, about 
45, I think it was, on the amount. And my highlight hue, I'm gonna pull that down a little bit to about 11 or so. I'm basically just warming up the highlights. Okay, now for shadows, I'm gonna do about a 32, 33 there, and I'm gonna leave it on a 65, the shadow hue. It just it creates, I think, a little bit nicer overall look to the photo. So there's the before and the after. As you can kind of tell, I pulled back a little bit on the tint that was in the, uh, in the foreground there, but I'm just looking uh, to balance out the colors and get a color kind of scheme that I like, and thus far I'm liking this. And so I find that I do that a lot when I'm editing is I'll make one move and then sometimes I'll counteract some uh, aspects of that move with another filter. It's just part of my creative process. There's no real science behind it. It's, it's definitely art in, in the sense that um, I'm not following, uh, it's, it's not a recipe, right? I'm not following directions. I'm kind of going by feel. Okay, and this is where I wanted to get creative. So I like the light, I like the colors, I like all that, but what I wanted to do, and, and this is two things. Number one, um, the first one is that studio just makes me kind of want to create artistic kind of things, right? It's got these wonderful art filters like the impression stuff and, you know, radiance and, you know, the simplify, those kind of things, abstraction, I guess it's called. And the second thing is just that it's Paris, and Paris to me just screams, you know, paint me. Um, so I'm gonna go get a look, and what I did is I went into the artistic category, right, which is there, and then I went uh, sort by, and I went to get impression. And that's simply because I was looking for the Van Gogh look. Um, I just think that goes really well with Paris. Um, and these kind of street scenes uh, in kind of the blue hour, I just think look great. So I'm gonna click on Van Gogh. And it gives you this preview at 100, but I really feel like 100 is too much, so I'm pulling that down to about 60. And that gives it a nice subtle look. You can tell that it's painted, but it's not so heavily painted like at 100 where you're blurring out a lot of the detail and kind of losing some sense of what the scene uh, sort of contains. So I'm going to go back. I was at about 60, and I'm going to hit Apply and stick that on the photo. And there we go. Let me show you the original kind of green um, you know, uh, fairly detailed, if you will. And then now we're softening up the details. And that's one of the things I like about using the art filters, but using, uh, in this case, a look that included impression, but basically at a lower opacity. And that is it softens up that artistic approach. So it's not as heavy handed. In this case, you can still make out that, you know, it's a street scene probably from Paris and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas at 100, I think it was a little bit heavy handed. And there's really only one thing left to do, and that is I want to soften up some of the light a little bit, and I'm going to use a vignette tool to do that. So the first thing I like to do with the vignette here is kind of play with these. So I want to go a little bit heavier. I want to go something like 80, 82. Uh, let's call it 82. But I'm going to pull the size back a little bit. I'm going to go like to, you know, 45, 46, something like that. And now looking at that, it's to me, it's too heavy-handed of, uh, of a vignette. It's it's really obvious it's a vignette, which is fine, but the, the transition is just way too abrupt for me. So I'm gonna use the roundness and the transition to change that. So I'm gonna go transition to one, so straight uh, to 1.0 on transition. That's basically blending. Uh, if, if you go this way, you can see you get a really hard edge, right? So I'm going the other way to increase the, uh, the transitional uh, zone, if you will, from no vignette to vignette. It's just a more of a gradient, for lack of a better word. And here I'm going to take the roundness down. It's at 50, and I'm going to take it down to like 15 or 16. And this is basically elongating it, making it a little bit more of a, of a rectangular, rectangular shaped sort of a vignette. Instead of a, a circle, I want it to be a little bit less round, a little bit more oval shaped, for lack of a better word. Okay, and two things that I think are really cool about the vignette tool in Studio 2, which I think is really well done on the part of Topaz, and that is um, here for vignette center, you can of course move that around, but you can just drag this and it'll show you the different quadrants of the photo and you can see how the vignette is moving around as I do that. So you could just say, oh, I really want the focus kind of over there or over here or whatever. And you also have this little icon. If you click on that, you can highlight it and you can just move that around as well. Now I'm gonna stick the vignette pretty much dead center here on that building. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go with about like that. And here's the other thing I think is super, really freaking cool about the vignette. And that is you come over here and you can choose a different color for your vignette. And it's not just doing a white vignette or a black one, but let me hit cancel. Um, 
The thing about this vignette that's kind of bugging me is it still seems a little bit heavy handed. Now I could take the strength down, uh, kind of lighten that up a little bit, which, which helps, but still it's, it's really dark and that's where this comes in handy. So you can come over here to color and you can say, all right, well, it's a dark vignette, but maybe I want to pull it like that and maybe I want to pull this down and you kind of see I'm kind of getting into a little bit of a purple vignette and I think that goes really well if you remember the tint it was kind of magenta that I added to the photo um, it, I think really helped the photo and in this case I'm kind of adding a little bit because I lowered the uh, the intensity here of the color is not black and so it starts getting into the purple and then I moved it away from dead center which would be dead black over here it kind of gives me a little just a tiny bit of that purple hue on the vignette which I think goes really well with this photo and so that's a super cool thing I think about the vignette uh, filter here in studio let me show you the before no vignette and the after um, you can tell that there's a vignette added, but it's a little softer around the edges, and part of that is I lowered the strength, but also because I changed the color of, it, of the vignette, and I, I just think that works really well. So let me show you my original. There it is. Now that's post-crop, but there's the original green, kind of really uh, just the colors just bug me, to be honest. It's way too pukey, greenish, yellow. And afterwards, a lot of color work and that sort of thing, and even if you don't like the Van Gogh kind of painterly look, if you turn that off, I still think you have a fine looking photo without the painterly look. So another great thing about Topaz is you can do all these experiments, just turn off that and say, all right, well, I don't like that. So you could just delete the effect and just leave it that way. I was going for the painterly look, so I'm gonna leave it like that. But you know, once again, the other thing is maybe take that opacity down a little bit more, maybe get into the 40s, you know, let's say maybe 40. And there's a really soft version of that painterly look applied. So you can tell kind of that it's, it's a little bit painted, but you have to look kind of close to tell. And I like that, especially for blue hour in cities where you get a little bit of that, you're not quite sure, you know, um, softer details because it is lower light. So you're going to see less detail. Um, and with all the color edits that I did, I think that Van Gogh works well. Now, I kind of like it at 60 doing the painterly look, but just keep in mind, you can adjust that opacity. So I'm going to go back to 60 and that's my final product. And there you go one more time. Here's the original and there's the final. And that's how I did it in Topaz Studio 2, my friends. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. I've got some more studio stuff I'll be doing along with, of course, more Luminar 4 videos. They'll be coming here soon. So thanks for watching. Um, any questions, by all means, let me know down below and don't forget to subscribe. More stuff coming soon. So thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. See you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.